our young democracy remains fragile, and the Afghan people are yet to see their aspirations realized through a strong, effective, and accountable national institutions. Chronic underinvestment for state capacity building, the existence of parallel structures, and the permeation of corruption and the culture of impunity have undermined the development of institutions in terms of strength and credibility. Our biggest challenge, our biggest challenge, of course, arises from insecurity, which has taken a massive toll on the lives of our people and blunted our progress in all other areas of recovery, reform, and development. Al-Qaeda and other terrorist organizations have been significantly weakened. However, the wider regional dimensions of the terrorist threat have been neglected and the problem of sanctuaries outside Afghanistan has remained unaddressed. As a result, terrorists continue to wage a vicious war against peace and tranquility. While this remains the case, Afghanistan's stability will continue to be at grave risk, as will the long-term security of the entire region and the wider world. Ladies and gentlemen, we in Afghanistan will continue to move on the path we have chosen and are determined to overcome the remaining challenges on the way ahead. Allow me, ladies and gentlemen, to share my vision for the future of Afghanistan and set out the steps we will take to achieve that vision. We Afghans have a fervent desire to live in a peaceful country where we can enjoy a dignified, happy, and prosperous life in unity and harmony. We want to build Afghanistan into a stable, democratic, and prosperous country, a country that is the peaceful home of all Afghans and that enjoys friendly, mutually rewarding relations with all its near and extended neighbors and, of course, beyond. We are determined that Afghanistan would never again fall to the hands of those who will turn it into a source of threat and harm to others. We want our country to be a genuine asset to security and peace in an integrated region. This is the vision of every Afghan. It is a vision that drives our ambitions and motivates our untiring efforts towards a better and secure future. In moving towards achieving this vision, we will consolidate the accomplishments of the past decade and continue our efforts with determination. We will work to fight corruption more effectively and further reform government institutions to render them more efficient, transparent, and accountable. We will enforce the rule of law and pursue further judicial reforms. In particular, as I promised to the Afghan people at the recent traditional lawyer jirga, we will focus on reforming the civil service so that it is apolitical, secure, and capably at the service of the Afghan people. We will reform and Afghanize the electoral process to ensure that future elections are transparent, free, and insulated from fraud and interference. Last week, the second phase of the security transition began in Parwan province, just north of Kabul. Hopefully, we will complete this second phase by the end of February 2012 whereby Afghanistan's national security forces will have responsibility for nearly 50% of the Afghan people. Transition is not only a solid, uh, a, so, a solid security objective, but also an imperative that responds to the Afghan people's desire for self-reliance. Therefore, I reiterate today that we are fully determined to complete the transition process as planned by 20. 14. At the same time, we call on the international community, in particular our allies in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, to continue and expand the scope of training, equipping, and equipping Afghanistan's security forces in order to enhance their capacity 
to defend the country's sovereignty and protect its citizens. We will also continue to pursue the peace and reconciliation effort as the surest path to a durable peace in Afghanistan. Regrettably, our peace efforts suffered a tremendous setback with the unfortunate assassination last September of Professor Burhan al-Din Rabani, the former president of Afghanistan and the head of the High Peace Council. I recently consulted the representatives of the Afghan people at the traditional lawyer Jirga about the future of the peace process and was pleased to see that the Afghan people want us to pursue the peace efforts, including bilateral cooperation with the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. Our principles for the peace process and the negotiated outcome remain unchanged. The political process will continue to be inclusive, open to Taliban and other militants who renounce violence, break ties with international terrorism, accept Afghan constitution, and return to peaceful life. I would like to reiterate our eager desire for Khadim Haramain Sharifain, His Majesty King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia, to continue to guide and support the Afghan peace efforts. Ladies and gentlemen, as we look to the transformation decade beyond 2014, that is from 2015 to 2024, Afghanistan would require continued financial support from its international partners in order to consolidate the gains of the past decade and to realize greater security and economic sustainability. The people of Afghanistan are looking to this conference for a clear affirmation of commitment to make security transition and economic progress irreversible. In the months ahead, we must engage in a serious debate with our international partners about the future economic development of Afghanistan. I thank the government of Japan, another friend and steadfast supporter of Afghanistan, for the decision to host a conference next year in Tokyo, focusing on Afghanistan's future economic agenda. Consistent with the corporate process, the international aid strategy must shift from stabilization to long-term development, with aid effectiveness as a top priority. We will give priority to implementing large-scale infrastructure projects, creating jobs and developing Afghanistan's productive sector, particularly agriculture, energy, and mining. Our country sits on trillions of dollars worth of underground resources, and we are working hard to exploit them in the interest of our long-term growth and prosperity. Ultimately, of course, ladies and gentlemen, the future of Afghanistan will depend on the prospects of economic integration in the region, of which Afghanistan is the center. Thanks to its location, Afghanistan has a key role as a land bridge for transit, trade, and connectivity. A stable, secure, and developed Afghanistan is not just a noble desire of the Afghan people and our international friends, it is a necessity if the region is to achieve security and meaningful economic integration. Afghanistan is ready to embrace the region in friendship, solidarity, and partnership. Last month in Istanbul, thanks to the leadership of our friend, the Brotherly Republic of Turkey, 12 of Afghanistan's near and extended neighbors came together to discuss the challenges within the region that prevent cooperation and the need for greater confidence building. I hope that the Istanbul process will continue to generate even greater momentum for cooperation at the regional level when the region meets again at the ministerial conference in Kabul next June. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, many of us around this table have met before at similar conferences on Afghanistan. But this conference is unlike others. Today is the culmination of a decade of joint struggle, shared efforts, and many sacrifices on both sides. As we gather in Bonn today, we have reasons to celebrate 10 years of partnership between Afghanistan and the international community. The truly significant achievements we have had together and the difference they have made to the lives 
of the Afghan people. We Afghans are grateful to the international community. Indeed, very, very grateful to the international community, to all of you present in this room, for helping us on this path, and for the sacrifices you have rendered alongside the Afghan people. At the same time, since the journey for Afghanistan still continues, the Afghan people ask of our friends and partners to continue to remain committed to the vision of a peaceful, prosperous, and democratic Afghanistan. And to stay the course with us as we reach that vision. Last month in Kabul, over 2,200 delegates to the traditional lower jirga, men and women from all corners of Afghanistan spoke in total unison for lasting relations with the international community. The jirga gave a resounding affirmation of our efforts to engage in enduring partnerships, enduring partnerships, and set out conditions that will have to be met as the partnerships between Afghanistan and the international community evolve. The aim of these partnerships is to help safeguard Afghanistan's security and stability, as well as assist our future economic development. In this regard, we welcome the decision of the European Union to enter into negotiations for a long-term partnership with us. We believe that such partnerships will be beneficial not only to Afghanistan, but also for the region and shall not be a threat to our neighbors or any other country. Rather, it should be considered as an asset to all of us. Ladies and gentlemen, responsibility for the future of Afghanistan rests with Afghans. And we Afghans will not fail or falter in assuming that responsibility. However, your continued solidarity, commitment, and support will be crucial, particularly in the period between 2014 and 2024, so that we can consolidate our gains and continue to address the challenges that remain. The Afghan people do not wish to remain a burden on the generosity of the international community for a single day longer than absolutely necessary. But to make our success certain and our progress irreversible, we will need your steadfast support for at least another decade. And here, once again, I thank the entire international community who have helped Afghanistan in massively significant ways. And Madam Chancellor, once again, on behalf of the Afghan people, to ask you to please convey the gratitude of the Afghan people to the people of Germany for their very strong, very sincere, committed friendship. And thank you very much. The Secretary General of the United Nations will now address the plenary session.